So this is how we're going to integrate absolute4x. And for the people who didn't like piecewise function that much, you can blame on the absolute4x because absolute4x is secretly the first piecewise function that you deal with. Okay? Technically, at the moment, we cannot do anything with it unless we break the absolute value into pieces. And let me remind you guys, the absolute value of x, this right here, we can look at it as two pieces. And you can use a graph as a reference. You know the graph of absolute value of x looks like this, right? Going down like this and then going up. This part, right? It's the same as just a regular x. So the first piece is just the regular x and that happens if x is bigger than 0, namely the inside is positive. On the other hand, you see this is the negative x, so the second part is negative x, and this will happen if x is less than 0. What happens if x is exactly 0? This is not LOL, this is absolute value of 0, this is still 0, right? And it doesn't really matter who you're plugging because 0 is 0, Negative 0 is also 0. So you can put the equal sign here, equal sign here, up to you. I want to put it down here. Anyways, this is how you can break it down as a piecewise function. Alright, enough talking. This is how we're going to integrate absolute value of x. This is the same as saying, well, based on the absolute value of x, we have to integrate x or negative x, right? This right here happens if x is greater than 0 or equal to 0. And this happens if x is less than 0. Don't put down equal sign on both of them, no. just one, it's good enough. And then we integrate x, and then we integrate negative x. And then at the end, make sure you write it down with two pieces. This part here, the antiderivative for that is 1 half x squared plus c. <laughs> if x is greater than or equal to 0, and this right here is just a negative 1 half x squared plus c if x is less than 0. And this is how to do it. So here I want to make a last remark. As you can see, this is how we integrate absolute value of x, right? We have to break down into pieces. And you see, if you know how to integrate the first piece, of course you can also integrate the second piece, right? Because this is just going to be the negative version of that. So it's not that fun to do it twice, right? And perhaps this is why, when we're trying to do uh, trick substitution, this kind of thing happens a lot. We see square root, let's say the inside ends up to be tangent square theta, and then we have to integrate this. For example, we tend to just cancel, cancel, without putting down the absolute value. We would like to focus on the actual integration part. What's the integral of this? Rather than break down into two parts, okay? And you have to, I guess this is my second remark right here. And you have to be careful with this, is when we have the limits of integrations, such as if this one was going from negative 3 to positive 2, then yes, we have to break down into piecewise. And then for this right here, it will go from negative 3 to 0, okay? And then for the top one here, it goes from 0 to positive 2. And you have to work out the FTC2. Right, the fundamental zero of calculus part two. For the top one and for the bottom one, and then add out the result. Okay, so that's it.